Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Mount Carmel Area High School Red Tornado Football. I'm Bob Els, along with Warren Altimore and Wayne Brokenshire, bringing you tonight's game between the Mount Carmel Area Red Tornadoes and Panther Valley. Panther Valley comes into the game one loss, lost to Lee Height, and Mount Carmel with the big win over Tamaqua. Could be a good one, though, Warren, in that Panther Valley is a pretty good team this year with returning Letterman. Well, if you're looking at, at, at the preseason, you know, stats and, and, and the preseason picks, Panther Valley was picked highly to, in the class AA. In fact, there was some statement, I think, in some paper that said that they felt that the first playoff in AA would be between, of our AA would be between Mount, Car be between Mount Carmel area and uh, Panther Valley. So they're highly thought of. Now, again, and this happened the last couple of years in a row, they got the ambush by Lee Heighton in the first uh, game. And to kind of bring you up to date with that a little bit, you got to remember that Lee Heighton is, is like a blood rival. It's like Shamok and Mount Carmel area to them. So it's, it's a little bit hard to say that, that they're a real bad team, a real good team by, by that loss. And it, but they have all the skilled people back, and that's what you want to look at. And Coach uh, Williams last night at the Supper Club was somewhat fearful of the quarterback and the receivers. And, and if you remember last year, those people put a wearing on us before he finally put the game away. So it's, it's going to be interesting from, from start to finish here, I think. The game last year, a 19-7 score, the Big Red 1 up at Panther Valley. Kicking off for Panther Valley tonight, the big offensive tackle, senior 6'1", 240-pound Joe Tout. Deep for the Red Tornadoes, Brett Veach, Dave Evans, and Joe Wargo. So we're here to start on a nice night after some thunderstorms rolled through here in Mount Carmel. It got warm, and it's nice again for a good evening of football. No win. Tout squibs one. Eric Higgins grabs it on about the 28-yard line, breaks it up the middle, still on his feet and tackled over there, looked like in on the play number 12 from Panther Valley, which is Dave Diglio. First down and 10, Big Red on the 39-yard line. Now, if you, if you go back to last year, you, you see Big Red. Big Red comes off a Tamako win where it was 47 to nothing and come into Panther Valley, and Panther Valley wasn't that highly looked at last year as they are this year, and, and they hold us to 19 points, and it was a dogfight right to the end, Wayne. I think That's you, right. you remember. So I think you're gonna expect, you can expect to see a good game. I, I hope we do anyway. Higgins, back to pass, looking on the fly, Gonzalo's out. Oh, a broken up, real nice play made by number 83 from Panther Valley, which is Brandon McKee, but they, Mount Carmel comes out throwing the ball. Set up the offense for Mount Carmel. Uh, Warren, we have Corey Hepler at tight end. Bill Anderson starting the game tonight at left tackle. Jamie Rowland at left guard, number 61. Ryan Geary at center, 55. John Yastashak at right guard number 69, and Dave Baxey, number 78, at the other tackle. Second down and 10. Pitch back to Veach. Finds a hole. Gain of nine, gain of 10, first down on the 49-yard line of Panther Valley. I don't know what the condition of the field is going to be. Uh, about an hour before the kickoff, we had a short uh, shower here, and there is uh, water on the bleachers and on the bench down below. And, uh, you know, the grass looks Lucky a little you have slick. Me. I was tromping around down oh, there. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but you know what? Big, uh, my big foot did not sink in anywhere, so I think not? we're okay. <laughs> first down and 10, Tornadoes 11 19 left in the first. Higgins, hand off to Veach, off the left side. Another big hole, close to the first down, and this one will be another first down. Good blocking by that offensive line of the Red Tornadoes. Finishing Mount Carmel's offense up is number 88, Joel Gonzalo. Number 10, Mike Higgins at quarterback. Number 44, Sean Sheptock at fullback. Number 22, Brett Veach at the tailback. And 21, Joe Wargo at the wide or uh, tight, tight end. Do we get them all? We got them all. Yep. First down and 10, Big Red. Higgins to Wargo. Oh, beautiful Finds a play. big hole. Takes it down to the 20, to the 19, about the 18-yard line. First down, big red. Trap play that time. It's outstanding trap play by the uh, uh, by the interior line there. I mean, just blew a hole through there. And also, well, you could see how they were they were keying on uh, on Brett, and it just opened Wargo right up, right up. Well, there was a lot of concern that Mount Carmel was going to have a little more difficult time running against this Panther Valley team and that they'd have to come out throwing the ball. But, boy, right now, there were four, three gaping holes on the last three plays. First down and 10, Big Red, 10-27 left in the first. Veach goes in motion for Mount Carmel. 
Oh. Tries up the middle to Sheptock, and that one's whistle stuck. already. In on the tackle, number 60 from the Panthers, which is Mike Brunda. 6'2", oh. 210, and he's playing nose guard. Excluding that play, uh, Coach Williams was, was adamant last night when we went discussing what Mount Carmel area would be looking to do tonight, and that would be run the ball. He is going to establish the run against every team that he plays this year, no matter what. And that seemed to be the theme. And I wasn't at the, the one before that, but Coach Connolly had echoed that very strongly at, at the last week's Supper Club that we will run no matter what it takes. Flags on the play and uh, to... Lined up offside. Right. To correct my statement there, Brund is playing at the middle linebacker position. Well, I'll tell you what, if you take a look at the defensive line now, they're, they're, they're putting up a real tight 5-4. They're bringing up the defensive backs, everybody right up off the line. The trap locking, I think Coach Williams, Wayne, you were there last night, talked about trap locking for 15 minutes last <laughs> night. We had, we had a, a clinic on trap locking. Second down, Higgins there with the is, rollout. There it is. Looking at Corey Hepler in the end zone. Touchdown, big red. I Higgins' mean, pass complete to Hepler. We've seen it. We uh, saw it last week open, and they used it right away. And I'll tell you what. You have to give credit to the, the coaches that are up in the booth. Uh, th the last two plays, the one that they stuffed uh, Sheptock on for a loss there, they brought a 5-4 up real tight to the line. There was nobody in the defensive backfield for two plays. There was the third play, and they called a beautiful in their offensive play. Yeah, well, if you're, if you're Panther Valley, I, I can't imagine that daring us to pass is going to be the right. way to win this game. I'm, I'm a little confused on that. Johnny has to check in to kick the movement. extra point, and there's going to be a flag on the play. It's good. Red guard. Full start. The holder missed okay, out right, the ball. First first fired pass take that penalty white. The kicker had it in his arm ready Got to run with it. Got a full start on a guard. Now we're going to uh, – apparently we're going to try to go for the two-point – conversion now since we changed the whole team over here now. That's against us, so it'll be a seven-yard play now. now. And I guess Coach Williams wants the two points now instead of going for the kick. Higgins at quarterback with Sheptock and Veach in the backfield. Faked it to Veach up the middle, Higgins back to pass, and run down in the backfield no in there, number 65, making the stop for Panther Valley, uh, Greg Kashulik. But a big scoring drive oh, by the Red Tornadoes. Quick six, 9.31 left in the game still, so a quick six points. And, and again, I don't care what anybody tells you that. You're, you're a visiting team like the Panthers are. You get down six points so fast with relative ease. You gotta, that's got to be in the back of your mind. you got to be thinking, hey, these guys can, can move. And, uh, you know, that's what they saw in that first series of downs from Mount Carmel area. Well, I don't know if they if they do not read the papers up there or what, or did they just look at the films last week and saw that we ran the ball so much that they are trying to stop the run, but they, they do have to realize they have Higgins and Gonzalo and and the whole crew back again that can catch the ball any place. Yeah, well, I mean, as I said, daring us to pass is not a right. sound strategy yeah. at this point in time. Joe, <clears throat> Joe Costello, number 41, will kick off for the Red Tornadoes. Taken by number 44, Gehring brings it up the right side. And a nice stop made in there with a shoestring tackle by number 27, Dave Evans. That time, uh, Sean Jamie was exchanging pleasantries with his other <laughs> other half, the other 30 on their team. <laughs> the two 30s were talking to each other. First down and 10, Panther Valley from the 35-yard line. Chris Kuzma, a quarterback for Panther Valley, 5'11", 185 pounds. Kuzma is a returning senior quarterback. He played last year in the 19-7 loss. Gives the ball to Gehring off the right side. Yeah. Finds a big hole. One man to beat him out there. Brett Veach and runs him down on the 46-yard line. And a gaping hole for the Panthers on their first play. First down and 10, Panther Valley on Mount Carmel's 45-yard line. So you see it year in and year out with Panther Valley. They spread you out. They, they put the wide splits in the linemen, and, uh, you know, they get your defense a little bit wider than normal, and if they can get a blocking scheme on you, they can break it. Kuzma sets up his Panthers. This one's going to Gehring off the right side, stuffed in there. Tackle made by 31, Corey Hepler. Also, Sean Sheptock in there, and number 63, Scott Grady. Good gang tackling that time by the Red Tornadoes. Gain of about a half a yard. 
Uh, it's hard. To, it's hard to get a read on the Panthers now. Even from last week, we when we when we talked about it with Coach Williams, he wasn't real sure what we were going to see offensively from them. They apparently, That's they right. didn't show much at all last week, and it was hard to get a, a reading on them. Kuzma looks like he's changing the play on the line of scrimmage. Gives the ball off to Gehring off the right side, and a nice stop made by number 21, Joe Wargo. Read the play very well and came up from his left linebacker position. Yeah, Scott Grady really had a beautiful move coming in. Uh, yeah. Where's he playing? Nose guard? Nose yeah. guard, yeah. Nose guarding. He almost had the handoff. Yeah, he was, he, was very, he was on the other side of the quarterback, and he would broke the play up. Now I can you. Know, I want you to rest assured. Early in the game, I spoke with each member of the team during the week, and I, I am assured there'll be absolutely no taunting in this game. There, <laughs> there, there will be, be none. There will be no taunting. Kuzma back to pass, looks downfield. Oh, nice great play. play made by the free safety Joel Gonzalo. Pass was uh, for Tony Lee coming from the tight end position. Gonzalo read it all the way and waited to, for his leap and jumped up and blocked it off. Good play by Joel. Perfect coverage. He, fourth, he, he, don't ask for better. Fourth down and seven for the Panthers from the 43-yard line. Uh, Mark Burns left his calling card right on the uh, chest of the quarterback. <laughs> I think he might have did that for me. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I'm here, he said. You want to throw it? Fine. Number 31 punting for Panther Valley. Nice. Brad Veach made a great play coming up getting it. He finds the hole. One man to beat, and he's tackled on about the 35-yard line. Tackled by number 31, the punter, which is Tony Lee, but a good run back by Veach. You know, we really have, if you watch if you watch that play, uh, the defender, the defensive end that was going down was more worried about the blocker than he was the yeah. ball, and Brad stepped in front of him, caught the ball, and took off. And yeah, he was two or three yards be, uh, on the other side of, of Veach before he caught the ball. Yeah. He was already out of the play. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. 6.54 left in the first quarter. Higgins puts Wargo in motion. Quick handoff to Shep Talk. Up the middle, gain of about 6.7, and oh, he's still nine. going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to not how far one. he goes. <laughs> he had two or three more yards left in him before he got down there. <laughs> Good run by Shep Talk. <laughs> Great second effort. One member of the Bruce brothers as we as he goes in there. <laughs> Good blocking in there on the offensive line, too. We have, as again, with Geary at center, Roland at guard, Yasashak at guard, Anderson at tackle, and Baxi at tackle. Second down and three. Higgins on the bootleg. Pitches oh, back to nice. Beach. One man to beat. Good block, and he gets him down to about the 32-yard line, but a nice option play by the Big Red. I'll tell you what, you have to give credit to Sheptuck and, and to Higgins on that. The linebackers were frozen their stance as soon as Sheptuck came into the line, and, and Higgins hit the ball on the bootleg. That was a pretty play, guys. We hadn't seen that one. I like that one. Yeah. That was a pretty play there. I said that because I was looking for the ball. I thought Jeppy <laughs> had it. <laughs> that was a nice play there. I like the way that looked. First down and 10. Higgins, quick pass to Gonzalo. Takes it out to the left side. Pick up about nine yards on the first down pass. There's so many off offensive weapons on this team. I don't think I've seen a receiver, though, maybe in the last 20 years, like Gonzalo, would, not only does he catch the ball, but that fabulous move instantly after he catches the ball to elude the first guy. The first guy never brings him down. He's always moved around him somehow, and that's, that's an amazing talent to be able to do that. Second down and three for the Red Tornadoes. The ball's resting on the 25-yard line of the Panthers. Wargo goes in motion. Higgins pitches back to Veach. Cuts it back upfield and a first down on the 20-yard line. Well, defensively, the Panthers are going to have to do something a little bit different than they are. When we're shifting around on offense, first thing you notice is that they're a little confused. There's too much movement on the defense right now. They're, they're trying to, to, to follow who we're shifting well, and who's moving, and it's not working yeah. for them that way. There's just too many. Actually, there's too many people to key. Yeah, that, <laughs> exactly. There's too many weapons back there. We right. said that last week. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes, 443. Oh, the, Bru the Bruce Brothers Left are in. in the first. This one's going to Veach. Looked like Joe Tout in the stop, who's the right tackle over there. He just blocked everything on that play. 
First look at the Bruce Brothers, that guy. Got time, guys. <laughs> Castman and Sheppy in there. Bruise and Bruise Incorporated. Second down and about six yards to go for the Red Tornadoes. Eric Higgins goes into the lineup where we have the Higgins brothers in now. The law firm. I think they represented me in an in a, in a auto accident case one time. I can't remember now. <laughs> Veach and Sheptock in the backfield. That is a fake to Veach. Oh. Higgins rolls out, looks in the end zone for his brother. Oh. oh, in and out of his hands. Nice play. Eric though. was one on one in the end zone and just off his fingertips. That was a heck of a heave, too. I'll tell yes, you what, on, on a dead run like that. Dead nice run pass. with someone grabbing you. Nice pass that time. I like that. Third down and six. See, Higgins is the kind of guy that can that, that throws an incomplete pass and you have, to, you have to say to yourself, nice pass. That was a good pass. There aren't many guys that do that. Wargo and Sheptock in the backfield with Veach at the wing. Higgins, straight drop back. And he had to throw that one away. Big rush from the interior line. Joe Tout in there. They blitzed too. There was a blitz. There was a going blitz on. on coming in from the linebacker position, which is number uh, 65 coming in there for Panther Valley. Greg Kashulik. Fourth down and six. 3:49 left in the first. Mount Carmel will go for it on fourth down. Higgins, straight drop. Looks in the corner of the end zone, and his receiver, I think, fell down. One of the receivers fell down on that play because nobody was in the corner at, at that time. Well, okay, Pantherville Valley will take over the balls on about the 16-yard line. First down and 10, Panther Valley. That's a big defensive stance for the Panther, Panthers. Well, that depends if they move it out of here or not, though, too. If they have to punt from back here. They'll be in trouble pretty quickly again, I think, the way this game is going as far as our offense. Gehring, the ball carrier, off the right side, finds a hole, tackled nicely by Brett Veach as he comes up from his cornerback spot for about a six-yard gain. Gehring's only a junior. Mm -hmm. Certainly looks bigger than 165 pounds. Yeah, he pounds, says 165 pounds, and he does look bigger. I, I don't, maybe he's, and he, what is he, 5'9", five, five so 165 pounds is going to make him look a little thinner than he looks on yeah. the field out there. Off the right side, big hole. Brett Veach has to make the initial hit, and then he's finally stopped over there by number uh, 59 getting up, Mark Burns. But they put in a new fullback, and that was number 48, Chad Malaska, in for Panther Valley. Well, they're going at our left side defensively almost exclusively. They've not right. come right at all. They're, they're, they're staying left, and that's, that's where they want to go right now, and that's where they're having their success. First down and 10, the ball on the 45-yard line. You have a little adjustments time right now, though. It's, uh, that's what it takes in the first quarter anyway. Pitch going to the right side with Gehring again. Nice play. Nice play made by Joe Wargo and also Sean Sheptock coming up there. Second down and 10. Two nineteen left in the first quarter. Big red in the lead, 6-0. Bill Anderson in at left tackle for the Big Red right now. Scott Grady at nose guard and Jason Rohrbaugh at the right tackle. Stosh Pulinovich and Mark Burns at the defensive end positions. Kuzma back to pass. Ooh, maybe. Big there rush on. No, 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 no. Oh. And a receiver there, and he does not catch I it. Don't, I don't think uh. you can throw the ball like that. Well, he did. Yeah, but I don't think you should be allowed to. I think that should have been called. He was already in the grass. <laughs> but he had a receiver. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Third down and 10. Who side do you want, anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you wanted to get a uh, 
a, a, a grounding call. No, That's no, what no, I thought no, you were no, looking no, for. Okay. Grass. He no, thought he was okay. going down. Okay. Third down and 10. You're lucky. Oh, I just missed it. You have to roll around up here with you now. Come on. <laughs> 152 <laughs> left in the first quarter. Quit taunting me. Finishing up the defense of the Big Red at the <laughs> linebacker positions, number 41, Joe Costello, and 44, Sean Sheptock. Then in the backfield, we have at the cornerbacks, Joe Wargo and Brett Veach. And we're missing a safety. Joel Gonzalo coming up at safety position. Coach Conley just went out in the huddle. I know the first words were a little human, isn't it? I'm sure that's what he said. Timeout called here with 1.52 left in the first quarter. That'll give us a little chance to talk about Supper Club. Last night, big crowd, big crowd. We had four young men with us last night. We had a great dinner. Coach Williams talked about the Tamaqua game in depth. A lot of questions asked. We talked about Panther Valley coming up. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, if you want to spend an hour and a half, it's about what it takes. It's all it takes about from 6.30 to about 8 o'clock in the evening. Stop the Matutis on a Thursday night at 6.30. Everyone is welcome. We had seven or eight uh, uh, women with us last night. Uh, it, was, it was really nice. It was. A lot of questions asked. It was, yeah, you got to come down. If you really want to get the inside on Big Red football, you got to show up at the supper club. You get to see the team. And, That's right. You, you get know. to sit with those young men, and it's, it's truly, truly a nice thing to do. Kuzma with two wide receivers split far left, and we have a flag on the play. We had uh, Mr. Uh, Goretzky, Cheddar, Burns, and uh, Yastashak last night. Yes. Four fine young men. I was kidding, Mr. Burns. I, I, leaned, I glanced over for a second. I thought he was napping Plus after dinner. Talking about being laid Repeat back. And then down. Coach Williams tells me he's one of the most intense guys on the field when he puts a helmet on. So, And he showed that a little yes, while ago. He so he, he wasn't kidding us. Even last week. Even last yeah. week against Tamaqui. That was yeah, an illegal procedure game. call against Panther Valley. You'd never know it from just seeing him there, though. <laughs> Oriole and McKee split far left. He's going to throw to him. Kuzma comes back here, and McKee not even looking back for the ball as he comes out of the backfield. McKee's one of the guys you want to watch from Panther Valley. I believe his father is the uh, wrestling coach up there, and he was a big football player in his day and uh, really an outstanding athlete. He was someone we were told to watch as uh, the game was going to progress, and I'm looking to see his – he's a junior only, so you'll see him again uh, next year. Panthers in punt formation. This one's a squibber taken by Gonzalo on about the 35-yard line. Breaks it up to the 42 and tackled in there by number 40 from Panther Valley, Ed Koga. 140 left in the first quarter. Six to nothing, Mount Carmelary in the lead. You don't have any of those. What was that name we always said about? Was, I know. What was that name? Pekka. Pekka, yeah, there's no Pekkas on no the Pekkas. roster. No Pekkas. I think the last Pekka to come through was John, and there were about six of them came through yeah, Panther yeah, Valley. There was a horde of them that went over the last 15 years or so. Higgins pitches back to Veach, brings it out around the right side, finds a nice block, and, boy, a good play made by McKee there. And that from, you know, we were talking about him offensively, but that was a nice defensive play as Brett did have some blockers with Baxi and uh, them out in front of him. What happened there was there was some penetration, and then Brett actually outran the blocker is what right. happened. He was ahead of him then, and then they're not going to do you much good that way. And there's nothing you can do when they penetrate like that. He had to move a little bit, and uh, that kind of messed the play up a little bit on that, on that one. That was a four-yard gain for the Big Red, though. Second down and six. Higgins. Hands off to Wargo, off the left side, finds a nice. hole. Big hole by Joe Wargo, and he drives, still driving down to the 35-yard line, and he's strong this year, guys. Oh, that's what Wargo can yeah. give you. Now, again, we talked about Wargo last week. We saw him just for a spurt at the end of the season. He had, he had the, the broken leg that he didn't come back from until late in the season, and we said it last year that he was going to be someone to watch. Right. And in these last two games, he's showing you, there's a kid with incredible speed, but also the toughness. You don't, you don't just knock him down. You've got to really work to bring him down. 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Higgins pitches back to Veach. Taking it out around the right side. A big stuff job there. It looks like number the initial hit made by number 18 from Panther Valley, Chris, Chris Dempsey. But again, you know, if you take a look at that play, uh, you have to give the, the trap on the left-hand side credit, that, that uh, the left side of the line. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, you're looking at they're, they're keying so many so many boys that can carry the ball. There was Sheptock 
a straight dive, and that's all it was, yeah. just a straight dive fake in the center of the line, and that just froze the two linebackers. You had to break the, the good blocking on the left-hand side and give Wargo just that much time to get through. End of the first quarter, the score, Mount Carmel area six, Panther Valley, Panther zero. We'll take a moment here to tell you that we are WKMC TV, Mount Carmel area. We are WLX 267, it's our microwave signal. We are an instructional fixed television service. You find us on the Service Electric Cable Television Network on channel 13, Wednesdays at eight o'clock. Going back to last week's conversation, Warren, about what is Phil Gergren's title? His title is Sports Information Director. Well, I'll tell you what, there's and no more information than him. I'm that's gonna right. give him that. that. Yeah. And going over some of his records that he's tabulated here, uh, Panther Valley and Mount Carmel have played 26 times. Mm -hmm. Panther Valley, or Mount Carmel, 22 wins, Panther Valley, four. Yes. A couple of interesting tidbits about that, too, and I'll look it over at this a second. And he showed them to me last night. Panther Valley had some interesting things happening while they were while we were playing them. Oh, here we are. In, uh, while we were playing Panther Valley, the first game or second game, 1969, the two-point conversion rule came into high school football. Oh, yeah. And that was the game that it happened with. 1969. 1969. That, I'll tell you what, that was that was the year Gary. Set the state record was 1969. Well, I would. I, just, the, I was just a baby then. I oh yeah. <laughs> but those were the those were the the points that really helped were those the two point conversions. It was also during the Panther Valley game of 1972 that we opened the new press box. Oh, where we are at right now. In 1974, playing Panther Valley, we achieved our 25th straight win in the early 70s. Second down and nine for the Big Red. Wargo, the ball carrier, Kashuik in on the tackle on the first down play. Higgins rolls to his left. Looks at Brett Veach coming out of the backfield and close to a first, first down. Game, yeah. One last tidbit. While playing Panther Valley in 1978, Mount Carmel area opened the stadium and it, and it had with the new bleachers that were added on the other side and the, and the, the refurbishments that went on, the stadium then sat 7,932. Now that, believe it or not, is not what its uh, biggest seating capacity was. Its biggest seating capacity came in the early 19. 30s and 40s, I guess, or 20s even, when it when it sat, uh, I guess, 10,000 or something. He told me, I'll get that for you next week. But 7932 uh, is what this stadium now seats, or at least what it's rated to seat now. Well, at one, I think at one time, if I'm not mistaken, on the scoreboard end zone, there were bleachers that were set up down there also. When First Blizzard. down, Big Red. Yeah. yeah, this was a bowl at one time. Right. The stadium was it was a bowl. That's why it was called a silver bowl. It actually had, had seats that circled the entire field at, at one time. And if you remember in the early 70s during the championship years back then, they would bring the ble bring bleachers in and set yep. them up back there for, for the uh, extra seating. There are my tidbits now. Thank you, Phil Gergen. We, without Phil Gergen, we'd be talking about the tips of our shoes right now instead of interesting little tidbits like that. Panther Valley showing the blitz. Oh. Higgins pitches the Veach out around the right side, turns the afterburners on, down to the 10, to the 5, and knocked out about the 4-yard line. And once you saw Brett break it around there, you know he's going to get around those people. He turns the corner, you're in big trouble. Big trouble. And you know it was brought out last night that uh, that Brett actually has Poochie's ankles. Uh, <laughs> His, his dad left that slip at the supper club last night, and Pucci has now confirmed it that Brett has Pucci's ankles. First down and goal to go for the Red Tornadoes from the six-yard line. Higgins hands off to Joe Wargo. Following oh, his blockers excellent. in, Joe Costello, and the left side of the line, touchdown, Big Red. Wow. Among all the things there you got was in some that great blocking right there. You got Wargo, and Wargo is a potent weapon. You get a block like he got there on the line with a little bit of movement right. there, and and he he is a very potent weapon. Teams are gonna are gonna see films now, and they're gonna be looking for him because he is something to watch. And again, you're teaming him up with Shep Dog, who is absolutely bloody people out there in a block, and uh, Costello, and then throw uh, the speed back Veach in there. Yep. Very difficult offense to want a defense. I'll say that for you. I mean, Shep Talk, you know, he goes through the line. You don't never see that unless you're really watching it. But I'll tell you what, people are being hurt out there. He's putting welts right. on somebody out there when he goes through that line on a block. You know, he's going through straight. He's not looking for a cut or an no, open no, or, no, or no, go no. here. Go. He's looking to run over you. Yeah, he'll go at you. Higgins to Veach. Takes it out around the left side. 
touch or two point conversion for the Big Red. <laughs> Giving him an extra one there. <laughs> With 10 38 remaining in the first half, the score Mount Cormelier Red Tornadoes 14, the Panther Valley Panthers 0. If I would be so bold, I think that play right there illustrated Pucci's ankles. Really? If no other play is going to, that was it, yes. What's impressive with the Red Tornadoes is when you come in and you score a touchdown, blowing one up on the middle of Panther Valley, and then you go for the extra point and you take one to the outside. Yeah. They yeah. have to really be wondering where their defense is going to go. Three wow. times on that drive they tried blitzing, you know, and, yeah. and they expected Mike to throw, and he didn't have to throw because they ran the ball. So it could be a long night for the Panthers if they can't figure out a defense to stop this team. Well, that's, what, that's what broke uh, Brett out to the right on that long run. They were firing the two linebackers, and they were just caught in the center. That was it. The line picked it up right away. It was the pitch to the outside, and Brett was gone. Yeah. Joe Costello will kick off for the Red Tornadoes. Number 44 is deep for Panther Valley, Roger Gehring. Also back there, number 24, Mike Toronto. Now, if you're watching offensively and you really want to watch football, and, and you're going to see some excellent football right down there in the trenches. Costello with a real nice kick, taken on about the five-yard line. Ooh, Ooh, nice stick. He's still up there, but finished Ooh. off by number 45, which, which is uh, Ryan McGee. But also in there was... Number 25, Dan Malakoski. 30, Sean Jamin. I think 32, Joe Shikitano in there. So yeah. a lot of the young guys in there making some big hits there on that play. Big hits. There was two or three hits on that play before he went down. You know, I mentioned that last week. If you take a look at the uh, the special team, the kickoff team, uh, there's not too many big boys out there. They've gone for speed yeah, this speed. year. Speed Get down, cover it, and we'll make the tackle. Yeah, that's exactly what that they did. They're going for speed. Flags on the play. Someone's going to be lined upside most probably on this play. Dead ball foul encroachment 52 on a defense. Who will be first down? Panthers will have a first down and five from the 28-yard line. 10-13 left in the first half. Gehring in the backfield, number 44. Also, Jamie Holar back there at fullback position. This one's going to Holar. Tackle made by number 31, Corey Hepler. Yeah, he could be just Holler. Holler. Holler? I'll holler to you when I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that, that could you know, be it. It could be that. I don't know. <laughs> Third down and one. What, Frenchie? Speak nothing, to me. Nothing. I didn't say a word. <laughs> God, you're going to mud wrestle up here? You're hollering to people? You know what I mean? Ah, I'm sorry. I'm into the game. I'm oh. here. Kuzma's ah, fumble on the play. Yeah. Sheptok finishes him off as, after he comes underneath, but good play there also by Scott Grady from the nose guard position. So it looked the right, right halfback moved a little bit for Panther Valley. Third down and three, nine minutes left in the first half. Quarterback positions now, we have number 26, Pete Cheddar, and 27, Dave Evans. Kuzma, quick drop back. Lays one out and a nice reception made by number 80 over there, which is Len Oriol. And they said, you know, we were talking to Panther Valley Radio, that's somebody who you have to watch for. Len Oriol as a good receiver. That was, that was a pass that didn't go quite as far as even the receiver thought on that one. <laughs> and our defender was, was running like it was gonna, you know, be a straight shot. And it kind of got up there and fell over and he Looked was like there a, to- A wounded it, duck. It, it didn't look, even the receiver was a little surprised that it, that it wasn't going as far as it, uh, he thought it was. I think the ball came down backwards almost. <laughs> I don't know what it was doing there, but. <laughs> Officials time out for an equipment adjustment. Panther Valley with a first down and 10, just on their side of the 50 yard line. It's hard to defend a pass like that though. You know, well, it's, you know, you know what, sure I'll tell you what, it, it did look like the offensive men pushed off uh, the defender. Kuzma. Hands off to Gehring, brings it around the right side, 
Nice stop made in there on the bottom of the pile. Looks like 52, Stosh Puldinovich, and 63, Scott Grady. I'll tell you what, Gehring's uh, not a bad looking back, Wayne. I have to say that for him. He, uh, no, he isn't. He's a, tough he, he's a tough runner. He might wear him down a little bit. Uh, we got Sean Jamin in now at uh, right defensive end. Kuzma fumbles Fumble. the ball and is going to be downed on after about a five yard loss. That's embarrassing when you do <laughs> when you do that. And you don't know whose fault that was, but That, that's, that could break a series, though, by that, that one play. You know, you're moving a little bit here. You're, you're getting some momentum, and then, boom, you fumble the ball and brings you up to third and ten, and now you're in a tough situation against this defense. Kuzma sets the Panthers. Mount Carmel putting some fresh legs in, in and out of the uh, backfield. Kuzma looks over the middle, hits McKee for a first down on about the 36-yard line. That's what Coach Williams was talking about last night. This is a team that, that lost a tough game to Lehigh, and people are saying to themselves, well, you know, Panther Valley's got nothing. Panther Valley's here. Kuzma, it, it, all you have to do is remember Kuzma from last year, and you're going to remember he can throw the ball. Right. And he's showing you right here that given a little bit of time, he will throw the ball accurately and, and, and gain some yardage. First down and 10, Panthers. Seven minutes left in the first half. Blitz coming in by Sheptock. Nice. Big play by Sean Sheptock. Right in at the angles, makes a great play. And coming from the other side, looks like Scott Grady came from nose guard. Yeah, nice play by Sheptock, though. He was in like a bullet that time. I don't know if there was, it, there must have been a stunt. They must have a stunt going on with the lineman to open up a hole that big for Sheppy to get in. Because mm -hmm. nobody even touched him coming through. Well, Second down and 18, the ball on the 45 yeah, yard line. Sheppy, he's not going to be squeezing through any cracks, okay? <laughs> Kuzma. Oh, look at this. Oh, intercepted oh, right. by Joe Wargo. What a great play. Joe saw that one coming all the way, followed the ball all the way. i to tell you what, guys. I never purported to be a, a expert in football, but that play right there I would not run again. <laughs> <laughs> First down and 10, red tornadoes on the 28-yard line. You know what I think? He was probably hoping to catch Wargo sleeping there, which is hard to believe, first of all, and just let the defensive end run down underneath the ball. But see, that, that's, a, that's a really difficult catch, even for the end to make it if he was uncovered. Right. I mean, it's over his head from the back. That's a I mean, it's a lob pass in the middle of the field. First of all, you get him killed. You know, somebody zeroing in on the guy. He's, <laughs> he's not going to be able to see him. He's looking up in the air. That, that, could, be, that could be injurious to your health. Higgins, straight drop back. Looks on the fly pattern to Gonzalo, and he's tripped Throwing up, but that's Throw that flag down. down. There it is. Throw Definitely flag is. Hey, hey, Penalty hey. all the way. Yep. Hey, who? 15-yard penalty against the Panthers, and Mount Carmel will have a first down on their 45-yard line. You know, I'll tell you what, it's a shame because that was a beautiful pass again, and I'll tell you what, it's going to be right on target. It was. He's going to get it. That was such a beautiful pass. You hate to waste them when, when, when this happens now. <laughs> that might have been the, the right play for the defender. Yeah. Because if Joel would have Pass got interference. Down, he, he was gone. On defense, yeah, number eight, 15 yards, all night first down. <laughs> You're right. Such a nice pass, though. You can sit and watch those forever. Oh, you yeah. really can. First down and 10, Mount Carmel area, 545 left in the first half. We just talked over the referee again, and it's just getting reprimanded a little while ago. We can't hear him. That's that's what the problem <laughs> is. He is. You're going to hear him, and we can't at, at the, the time that it's happening. <laughs> Sheptock up the middle, gain of about five yards. Yeah, we just got the wiki stick from the producer on that not five seconds ago, and we went and talked <laughs> right over him again. <laughs> We're going to have to get a little better at that one. <laughs> And I apologies. He was so uh, so nice about wearing it. The guy in the white hat's gonna do the talking to us. Okay, he's the one wearing. I put the mic on his belt myself. We just gotta keep our eye on the white hat. We'll be all right. Here he goes. Face match 65 on a defense. 
15 yards, first down. Well, there's the first one of the night we got right. <laughs> I apologize for all of us on that one, but when you don't hear him speaking, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't register that he's actually talking to us. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes in Panther Valley territory on the 37-yard line. They have five minutes and 34 seconds left in the first half. Gonzalo goes in motion. Higgins. Fumble on the play. Ball's laying loose and recovered by Panther Valley. Well, there's flags all over the, all over the field, so we're going to have to see what we're calling here now. Um, Chad Nalaska in with the fumble recovery. They're putting the ball down where the, where the recovery was. Illegal Check. shift on the offense before the fumble. It's refused. First down. Il illegal shift. Right. Oh, okay. I'm looking at I'm looking at the guy down below here, and he's doing that <laughs> with his hands. I, I didn't know what that move was. First down and ten. Panther Valley with the ball on the 39-yard line. 14 to nothing. Big Red in the lead. I thought he lost his watch or something there for a second. I didn't know. Kuzma, straight drop back, big rush from Stosh Pulinovich, gets the ball to Gehring. Hepler there, gets away from him, and a fine tackle made by Scott Grady and number 44, Sean Sheptock. Tell you what, great defensive play, but uh, you have to give uh, Gehring credit. He, you know, he caught the ball back there, and he was hit. You know, three yards behind the line, he still picked up three or yeah, four. Yeah, Gehring's tough. He really is. He's a tough runner. You're not, you're not going to take anything away from him. He gets the ball. you got to really work to bring him down. Second down and eight. 4.30 left in the half. Kuzma to Gehring. Oh, big stuff in there <laughs> like by Stodge Pulinovich like like and Joe Wargo. That, that's how you work to bring him down, just like that. That's how it works. One low, one high. Yeah, and he comes down, just like that. Third down and eight. Clock running against the Panthers. Orioles split far left. McKee split far right. Kuzma, quick drop back. Looks in the direction of Oriole. Broken up by number 27, Dave Evans. Nice play. That, was, that pass took too long to get out there is what happened. It's, they're both kind of shifting their feet there, trying to get position right. to catch that baby. This will bring up a fourth down. Oh, flag Oh, and here. a flag on the play. Flag on, a, on the coach. Which one? Uh, Panther Valley. Panther Valley. He wasn't taunting, was he? Uh, big time. Taunt, oh, taunting oh, the that. ref. I won't here stand Here comes the that. call, guys. Where is he? There he is. Loss it down? No. I just won't put up with this taunting. I'm sorry. I will not stand for it. Someone's going to have to go over and tell him. That was, must have been a, like a big time taunt. Yeah. Let me tell you, he, <laughs> he, he threw that flag. It one there. of those one word taunts. Yeah. They're the worst kind. <laughs> that moves the Panthers back to the 27 yard line. Number 31 in there to kick Tony Lee. Deep for the Red Tornadoes, 22 Brett Veach and 88 Joel Gonzalo. Snaps back. Kick in the direction of Veach, takes it on the 39 yard line. Oh, Slips. He's down. <laughs> and you know oh, what? Come on. There's a bad call right there. First, I, unless, is that a flag? I think I thought it was his bean bag because I thought he put his knee down. No, nope, he threw a flag. Right. It's a flag now. That's a bad call because, first of all, the play was Brett, put his, Brett put his, his knee down, uh -huh. and the defender was like five yards away from him before, the, before we even blocked him. Mm -hmm. So the whistle should have been blown before. Well, here we go. It's coming now. Disregard the penalty. The play was over before the foul. <laughs> and the Frenchman calls one. That was a good call, though. That was correct. 
because Brett was down yeah, right did, there where they placed he did, the ball. He did touch the knee down. Mount Carmel has three minutes and 28 seconds left in the first half. 14 to nothing, the Big Red in the lead. Higgins pitches back to Veach, sending him out around the right side. Nice tackle made by number eight from the Panthers, Chris Kuzma, the quarterback. Oh, Kuzma, Kuzma made the tackle that time only because two guys steamrolled over him, and I think somebody tripped on him when they were going by <laughs> because he wasn't in any position to do any tackling when, where he was. Second down and nine for the Big Red. Eric Higgins into the Red Tornado lineup. Joe Wargo split far left and Joel Gonzalo to the right. Sheptock and Veach still in the backfield. Higgins pitches to Veach coming to the left side. Gets to the 38, to the 50, has a first down nice. and more and knocked out of bounds on about the 40, 38 yard line. With two cameramen. Yep, I was gonna say we got, we, well one for sure went down. Yeah. <laughs> the other one ran for his life. There was, was some nice blocks going on down there. I don't know if you guys were catching them. There were some you, nice blocks along the sideline as he was making the turn. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, what's Brett, a, f a sophomore? Yep. For how young as, uh, that he is, uh, take a look. When he gets downfield, and, and he was 20 yards downfield already, he was still following his blockers. He waited for the block, and then he took off. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes. Higgins with a quick handoff. To Wargo and a nice stop made by number 65 for the Panthers, Greg Kashulek. That was a tough hit that time. He was standing in the hole. Either we missed the, the trap or whatever. He was standing right in the hole. I'll tell you what, standing up here, if you watch every watch the place, we're going either right or left, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody is keying on Higgins for a bootleg or a keeper going mm -hmm. the opposite direction. Second down and eleven. Two minutes left in the first half. Higgins fakes up the middle. Big rush from the ends. Higgins tucks the ball away. Now he looks downfield and broken up by number 24 from the Panthers, Mike Toronto. But big rush that time from the defensive ends of the Panthers. Third down and 11. Yeah, they, they were in. I mean, they were, he never got set up and he had to make his move already. That's tough to throw under those conditions. They were in really quick that time. Tony Lee and Chris Dempsey are the two defensive ends for Panther Valley. The big guy in the middle there, Cassiolic, you'll remember that name. That name's been floating through Panther Valley for some time, too. He's a, he's a decent ball player down there on the line, too. He's, a, he's mixing it up pretty well down there. Higgins, straight drop back. Screen. Screen pass to Veach. Cassiolic behind him, but he finds a hole. Oh, beautiful. Down to about the 20 to the 19, and he's going all the way. Some great moves made by Brett Veach on that play, and some good blocking from the screen pass. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what pure speed gets you. Right. Pure, unadulterated speed. He had two guys, two Panther Valley guys, run into each other and knock each other down as he made the cut. That was a nice screen pass. Pretty play. Pretty play. I don't know, for a second, all I could see were Poochie's ankles slashing when he made the cut. <laughs> John Yastashak in to attempt the extra point for the Red Tornadoes. 1.48 left in the first half. Snaps back, it's down, kicks up. And it's good. <laughs> Nobody's going on a limb on these. I, <laughs> I didn't know where that was going. <laughs> I was afraid to call that one. With 1.48 left in the first half, the score, Mount Carmel area 21, Panther Valley 0. Now, I'll tell you what, guys, that's a highlight reel, <laughs> that, that last play, though. It really is. That's highlight. I mean, they, he almost pinned to the sidelines. He cuts back. He's got two guys dead aiming on him. By the time he's done, they've both run into each other laying on the ground. He's in the end zone. I'll tell you what, guys, the uh, Panther Valley band is going to get run over when Mount Carmel area comes running off the field no, at heard, halftime. They heard you. Take a look. We just made it Are they starting space. to make a yeah. move? Everybody turn the opposite <laughs> way now. I saw them coming into the runway there, and I said, wow, they're going to get run over down there. <laughs> <laughs> Number 24, good. Mike Toronto and Garing Deep for Panther Valley. That could be ugly down there, Bob. I'm not going to look at that. They're still there. I don't want to watch. I know. Oh, there's a trumpet player coming out to defend the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Costello squibs one along the ground. Picked up on the far side. Oh! Yep. Big hit. 29? 29 is coming out of there, guys. 29. Dan Malakoski with the oh, hit. Oh. 
my ribs hurt right now. <laughs> I know you guys, like, I lost my breath for a second on that hit. I'll good, tell you what, that's, good a, play. that's the second kickoff that Dan was involved in and he jarred some teeth. Yeah, that's, that's an impressive hit. I like that. First down and 10 for the Panthers. 1.41 left on the clock. And I'm sure Mount Carmel area linemen are happy to be able to tee off on this Chris Kuzma right now. <laughs> yeah, he's not in an enviable position, that's for sure. Kuzma with McKee and Oriol split far right. Puldanovich after Kuzma. Oriol out here and he slips on about the 45-yard line. Second down and 10. Hey, truth be, I don't think he would have caught it either way, to tell you the truth. He was out of position where their pass wasn't where, you know, where he thought it was going to be. He was definitely in the open. They spot though, pass. You see that, though. Right. They're, they're throwing to a spot on the field, yes, and, and, and they're not. I mean, that's that's an accepted way to do things. Obviously, a lot of teams will do that. But they, you know, whereas we're looking for a guy in a specific pattern, and we're watching it open up, he's dropping back and firing the ball to a spot and hoping that receiver is there to catch it. Second down and 10. Kuzma, straight drop back. Lots of time. That time looks at his receiver over the head of number 27, Fred Vito, and also over the head of 22, Brett Veach. I don't think Brett expected the ball no, to come through he like surprised that. Him, you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he even looked surprised <laughs> as it went through. Well, Mount Carmel area in a prevent defense right now, so some of those short gaps will get open. There will be a right. receiver open in the 10 to 15 yard range because with 131 left on the clock, they're going to give up a little bit of the short yardage right now. Third down and 10. Kuzma, big rush on. Ball's incomplete. Dave Evans over there defending right on the spot again. Gave a nice shot out of bounds as he went up for the ball. That's what we like to see. Fourth down and 10, and this gives Mount Carmel a chance with 126 to yeah. air it out and I know go the, for broke. I know the Panthers weren't too, too, aren't too thrilled about having a punt with this much time left on the clock yet, and especially when you got those two guys back receiving. Tony Lee in punt formation for the Panthers. Kicks away. Taken by Veach on about the 39-yard line. Finds a little bit of running room and brings it up to the 45. Whew. Almost everybody's in on that play. All, right. all of us and all of them. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Red Tornado clock. I was looking right at it. The lights, even the lights are a little dimmer now here. We really took a shot from something here. 116 left on the clock. The scoreboard's gone completely blank. Well, there were a lot of people looking at one minute and 16 seconds. Yeah, there's a couple other people. You know, I think to myself every time these things happen, like I'm wearing this headset and all, I could be like a, a French fried potato <laughs> in a second when this thing, whatever it was. But we've uh, we definitely touched something hey, out there somewhere. Hey, if you like didn't notice, like the whole crowd in this E section turned around and looked at you, Bob and I sort of stood back. We <laughs> sort of walked back yeah. a little bit. Eh? Sorry about that. <laughs> Quick pass oh, there it is. to Joe Wargo. Out Brings it out of bounds after a first down on the 43-yard line. Now, what we what you would have seen there when you're watching TV, it was not your TV. The tape will show a, a, a blip on it when the power outage occurred. Well, now the clock, the clock is now back there on. Again. Nope, it's off again. Yeah, we're having all kinds of problems here now. Taken by Gonzalo. Oh, nice First move. down, and he's out of bounds after a great move. Oh. <laughs> that was again that's what I said about him he, he not only catches the ball but he has that great first move that, that springs him You're into right. the open right away first down and 10 for the Red Tornadoes the ball on about the 31 yard line I figure about 59 seconds left on the clock yeah. I think the scoreboard's going to be up and running for the second half though they look like they're bringing it back online here that was a quick jolt though that really really went through the stadium whenever it was Higgins, hand oh, off the oh, beach. Oh, oh. <laughs> Find some running room, a gain of about eight yards, and now Mount Carmel forced to call timeout. The one guy there, 40, is it 48 from Panther Valley? 
I'm looking here, Maleska. That saved the touchdown. You're right. He saved the touchdown. And all he did was slow Brett up about two steps, and that saved the touchdown because otherwise it was six points. Scoreboard's out again. Yeah, it's, it's going to be some problems, I think, for the, the scoreboard. You know, that's the touchiest scoreboard in, on earth. When somebody sneezes in Shemokin, the scoreboard goes out. It's amazing. But trying to bring it back online is, is really, it, it's, a, it's a tedious task to get everything back working again. It's right. not like you just flip the switch and it goes on. It never works that way. You have to go through a whole series of, of things and all to get the thing working. Well, Mount Carmel area with a 21 to nothing lead, probably in the 50 second range left on the clock. So Mount Carmel still with about 50 seconds left on the clock. It does make it difficult on coaching staff, though, when the clock is not running to, you know, determine at the end of a half oh, like yeah. this what's really going yeah, you're, on. You're, you're definitely in the dark, so to speak. Higgins sets the tornadoes, rolls to his left, looks over the middle, finds Ward oh, on Wargo. the four. Touchdown, yeah. Red Tornadoes. Hey, he catches the ball on the four-yard line. You better tackle him around the knees right there, yeah. or he's carrying you in like he just did. Yeah, you don't you don't want to get squared up with him. I'm telling you, he's going to hurt you. <laughs> He'll go at you. 27 to nothing, Mount Carmel area in the lead. Yastashak in to attempt the extra point. Uh, Joey Wurgo really, really is looking good tonight. He is. He's everything they said he would be last year. Snaps back. It's down. It kicks up. And it's good. And with about 30 seconds left in the first half, the score, Mount Carmel area 28, Panther Valley Panthers 0. That was an impressive drive yeah, by with, the Big Red. With a minute and 16 seconds left or whatever they started off with, not, not much more than that. That is, and again, there you had the running, the passing, the balance, well, the attack. It's, it's just amazing the kind of offensive power that's being shown. What was neat, there. it was that they could show the two-minute drill. That was pretty awesome how they, they ran two quick ones outside, tried one up the middle, and then hit Joe Wargo coming out of the backfield. Mm -hmm. Costello kicking off for the Red Tornadoes again, squibbed one. Taken by Oriole, catches it on the bounce, brings it around the left side, and hit over there by a. I, I don't even want to. Well, wow. Dan Malakoski's in there. <laughs> 83. Number 83, Higgins. Eric Higgins. Number 32, Joe Shikatano. 41, Joe Costello. And 30, Sean Jamin. I would have just said the usual tacklers. <laughs> Panther Valley with their first down and 10, throws the ball incomplete to McKee. And I was thinking they'd sit on the ball and just get into their uh, locker room and try to talk this thing over. But they are coming out trying to throw the ball. They'll probably have two more downs here. Kuzma splits Oriole far right. Let's one go. Only person out there was number 27, Dave Evans. This, this is really a strange passing attack, though. It's not very accurate whatsoever. Again, he's not looking at a receiver. He's throwing to the spot. And that's the end of the first half. The score, Mount Carmel area 28, Panther Valley Panthers 0. Okay, gang, halftime stats. As usual, here we are, Mount Carmel area in the rushing department. Mount Carmel rushed the ball 20 times for a total of 171 yards. They passed for 7 out of 12 for 122 yards. Individually, Beach rushed 11 times for 106 yards. Wargo five times for 45 yards. Chep talked three for 10. In the passing department, Beach got two passes for 50 yards. Wargo two for 36. Uh, Gonzalez two for 21. I guess. <laughs> trying to read those A's writing here. And Hepler one for 15. Panta Valley rushed the ball 12 times for a total of 49 yards. And they passed three of 12 for a total of 36 yards. In the first down department, Mount Cornelary had 16 in the first half. A fairly large number in the first half, guys, for first downs. Panther Valley came with four first downs in the first half. In the touchdown department, Veach got a pass 41 yards for a touchdown. Wargo a pass for 25 yards for a touchdown. Hepler a pass for 15 yards for a touchdown. And Wargo ran one in from six yards out. And that's the end of the stats for this game. See you next week. 
Back to start the second half, Mount Carmel with an impressive 28 points and an offense that looks right now unstoppable. No, you hate, I mean, you hate to say that, and, I, and Coach Whitey is gonna, gonna punch us for saying that, but you have to look at it and say that yes, it certainly is unstoppable. Uh, the weapons, as we, as we said last week so many times, and again, we're gonna say it throughout the year because it's just a simple fact. When you have so many different people who can hurt you offensively like we do, you're an absolute nightmare for a defensive team, and you're seeing that from Panther Valley's side of the ball. They did not play a bad first half. They really didn't. It's not like they were – if you compare them to Tamaqua now, I thought Tamaqua was disorganized, and I thought maybe they weren't ready to play football on, on the opening night. Panther Valley's some hard hitting. You know, they're, they're playing their hard side out there, and they're doing everything they can, but it's just not, it's just not working. And especially on defense, they seem – you know, when you're being pummeled out there with, with Shep talk, and then you got Wargo whacking at you – and you get Veach running past you so fast you don't even see him. Very difficult night. Uh, they're starting to wear down. We saw them they, in the films, according to the coaching staff, they wore down a little bit last week in that fourth quarter. So if that's the case tonight, this score could be ugly. It really could be before it's over. They're going to have to really uh, regroup in there at, at, at halftime and come out here and, and say to themselves, for pride, we're going to stop this now and, and see what happens. But it's, it's not an easy thing to do. It really isn't. Well, we've talked about it throughout last week's game, and, and I think we'll talk about it throughout the whole season, Warren, that this is an explosive offense this year. Yeah, and, it really is. And, yeah. Wayne, I think, I think you've said it, too, with the receivers. There's just so many people right now that Michael can throw to. Right. And also Michael's becoming a little more mature and looking at the receivers and picking his second receiver and third receiver up to throw the touchdown pass to. Well, you know, last year was a, it was sort of a different story. Uh, uh, Joel and, and Mike uh, came of age last year, and uh, you know we were still at we were still a team. We were we had the inexperience there, but we were still a team that could that could hurt somebody or hurt anybody at any given time. And uh, now this year it's a different story. You know they're in the papers all the time. They're being keyed on. So you know we have to look to other people at, at certain on certain plays. Joe Costello will kick off for the Red Tornadoes. Kick taken about on the 11-yard line by Gehring. He fumbles the ball, picks it up, and a nice hit made. 28. By number 28 for the Red Tornadoes, Denny Molosevic. That was Toronto uh, field at the ball. Toronto had Toronto. the ball. Toronto, yeah, or Toronto, whatever. I saw a lot of fours out there. Yeah, one, well, two. he's 20, 24, Maybe I guess. multiply it by two, it's four, so there were a lot of fours out Tell there. Tell you what, Denny <laughs> made a nice, nice open field tackle. Uh -huh. First down and 10, Panthers on about the 17-yard line. I don't want to get Gearing mad at us because he's having himself a whale of a game so far. I don't want to have to get him in, in trouble on a fumble there when it wasn't him. Gearing and Holler in the backfield. This one's going to Gearing off the right side. This time stuffed over there. In on the tackle, 44, Sean Sheptock. Number 70, Jason Rohrbaugh and 69, John Yastashak in on defense right now. If you're, if you're Panther Valor, this is truly a coaching nightmare because you're 28 points behind to start the second half off. And, and obviously you're not going to win the game by grounding out on the ground now if, if that's what your game plan was. And passing-wise, they have not exactly lit the, the field up passing. Now, they may be better at it than they're showing tonight. And, of course, they're up against a really quick physical defense, which is, is limiting it. But it doesn't look like they can come back on passing either. Kuzma with the option play, and he pitches it still on nice. the ground. Recovered by number 41, Joe Costello. Tell you what, Wargo made one heck of a play. He did. He, I it, saw what he did. He, <laughs> he actually tackled the halfback that was supposed to get the pitch and took him away from the ball because the halfback actually could have grabbed the ball yeah. and, and held on to it. Yeah. But tackled him and drug him off the ball for, for us to take it over on about yeah. the nine-yard line. You see Arms trying to reach for it, and he was moving backwards as he was trying to reach out for the ball, and, and uh, they lost the fumble, on the, on the, and this is not the way they wanted to start the second half off, obviously. First down and goal to go for the Red Tornadoes, the ball on the nine-yard line. Higgins to Sheptock off the right side. Big power surge by the right side of the Mount Carmel offensive line. Brings them down to about the four-yard line. That's if, if you there wasn't really a hole there. He no. they just pushed right. the whole that, line went. Everybody went to the four-yard line. That's exactly what line surge is when they when they're describing that. When you hear that in a football game, that was line surge right there. Because he was actually turned backwards and just, just following along the with them when they <laughs> when he went down. So 
Second down and goal to go from the four. Higgins, the chef talk off the left side. Touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Now, a really tough way for the Panthers, and, and I'm afraid to say now, but I think the game's out of reach now for, for them. Early, very early in the, in, the, in the second half. Fumble, recovery, Big Red puts it in in, in two plays. Not a good sign if you're in, in the black and yellow over there. Corey Hepler in to attempt the extra point. This will be Corey's first extra point. Pete Cheddar puts the ball down. Hepler with the kick, and it's blocked. Now under the snap just didn't get back and and grasp. I just don't think it got back in time. I wasn't sure when I was looking through. That's uh, 9.56 left in the third quarter. Mount Carmel area 34, Panther Valley zero. Well, on the other side of the coin here, now we start to look for the, for the other players here. You're going to see everybody in a bench play once again, second week in a row, and that's, and Coach Williams said that last night. First of all, he said there wasn't what you would consider like the first 22 here. That's right. He made it a point to say that everybody has a, has a spot here, and everybody goes in and out of the game either the first quarter or the fourth quarter. And uh, you saw that. You saw that a lot last week. We saw different players, and, and we said, you know, the, you had the second unit, and he corrected us. He said it was not the second unit. There, there wasn't really such a thing as a second unit. And uh, you're going to see all these guys in here again, and everybody getting valuable game experience, and it's going to pay off down the line again because you, you don't expect to go through a whole season without an injury. It just doesn't happen. Well, and, you know, he you know, did. He made that point, at, like the guards. He, he, they have five guards that they can interchange at any one point in time, and and he sort of made it sound like you know we're getting fresh legs in there. This yeah. is the first time yeah. that we have some depth on the field. Uh, the defensive backs were the same way with Evans and and uh, P. Cheddar. They can go in at any time. Costello kicks off. Ball taken by number 24, Mike Toronto. Brings it around the right side. Hit over there by number five, Vic Kranatsky, getting up off the pile, 45, Ryan McGee, 83, Eric Higgins, and number 27, Dave Evans. And when you talk about injuries, I wanted to take a moment. I, I started to talk about it last week, and then I, I, didn't re I didn't follow up on it. The only real injury that Mount Carmel area came into the season with, and again, a heartbreaking one, was Brian Hollenbush. Hollenbush, he wears number 57. I, he... Uh, He's hobbling around on the sidelines with a cast. He broke his ankle and his loss for the season. Uh, a tough loss. Now, now Brian, on the, on the good side of that, is only a sophomore, so he has two more years to go, but not a good thing to have happen to you. Mike Davis in at quarterback for the Panthers. Hands off to the right side. Tackle by Corey Hepler in there. Also in on the tackle number 63, Scott Grady. And you work so hard throughout the, the winter time, and you lift weights, yep. and you do all the right. things that need to be done, and and boom, you know, you, you break an ankle, and, and in a second, your whole season is gone. You don't you don't get to play any football. You know, you're on the sidelines, and it's it's really your heart's got to go out to the guys that that it happened to us. You know, somebody every year, and, and this year, unfortunately, Brian has has the pick of the the bad luck. McKee goes in motion. This one's handed off to Malaska. Joe Wargo in on the tackle. Also, Jason Rohrbaugh and number 52, Stosh Puldanovich. Well, the, the initial hit there had uh, came from Sheptok, number 44. He actually met the halfback when he was getting the handoff in the backfield. 8.22 left in the third quarter. 34-0, Big Red in the lead. Rather quiet in the stadium tonight. The uh, public address system never really recovered from the, from the shock of the power outage and had some problems at halftime and is no longer in operational condition tonight. <clears throat> Davis drops back the pass. Big rush from Burns. Let's one fly. And Caught it. catch made by number 31, which is Tony Lee. There's a flag on the play, though, very early. So we'll have to wait and see what that's going to be. And it uh, doesn't look good, to tell you the truth. I think the Panthers are going to get caught for something. Yep, a motion are. call against Panther Valley. Now, that pass by Davis got there, though. That was a good throw uh, by Davis. He yep. watched his receiver going out and got it to him. And he, 
He withstood a lot of pressure from Burns and from Stosh Puldanovich. Well, when, he, when he's throwing to a receiver, he's fine. It's Illegal motion! That, that 31 offense! Third down! Apparently, I catch myself in time. I saw him come out to talk there. But the spot passing is where they had most of their problems at. Davis rolls a little bit to his left, looks over the middle, and broken up by number 44, Sean Sheptock. Good play by Sheppy, really good play that time. Right on the receiver, right there. Fourth down and 15 for the Panthers. This one's going to be taken by Veach on about the 44-yard line. Makes a nice move, oh. finds a hole, and we're going to have a clip called here as Veach trips up, is tripped up on about the 30-yard line. That'll come back. Nice run, though, again. It's, Great it's run by Brett Veach. to watch him. It really is. It's absolutely amazing to see that kind of speed. Yes, Deshek, well, I think one of the reasons we didn't see him kicking out last time, I noticed him down there, and Doc Rick was with him. He we had got ice on his, on his hand or his, his wrist or something there. I First think down. That, that might be one of the reasons he wasn't kicking the extra point the last time. It, it doesn't look tremendously serious because he's kind of fooling around with the bag at the same time. But, uh, <laughs> Dropping we'll, the ice all over here. Yeah, we'll know later on what that was, but I think that's why he was out of the game on both those tries and now he has everyone over there checking it out for him so <laughs> does it need a stitch yeah that's, you know. that's what they're asking yeah. Yeah, yeah, cut Higgins rolls to his right looks at Gonzalo hits him in the flat for about a three yard gain. nice catch that was a tough catch to make the way he did that second down and seven seven minutes left in the third quarter I was hoping sometime before the end of the season, I know it's a touchy subject with Frenchie, but, you know, Frenchie was in Bosnia-Herzegovina for two months this summer with the uh, UN peacekeeping mission. And I believe that most of that's been non-classified now. If you have a chance to talk to us about it sometime during the season, I'm sure our listeners would like to hear it, Frenchman. Well, maybe next week uh, while you're at Penn State. Okay. Uh, Bob and I are by ourselves up at Marion. Uh, you know, we just might. Uh, you'll need something to fill, believe I mean. <laughs> oh, easy now. Back off. <laughs> Shep talk up the middle for about a nine-yard gain and very close to a first down. Tackle made by number eight, Chris Kuzma. And, of course, Swade, I guess, in the convent again for two months in the oh, summer. Oh, that's true. Yes. Yeah, she was. Uh, She's a good girl. From the middle of June until August. She understands, though. She's, uh, no, she never complains. I'll give no. her that. God knows she has a lot to complain about. Sheptock up the middle. First down after about a three-yard gain. Here's the play you wonder yourself. How did he get where he is? Because <laughs> it doesn't look like there was even a speck of space there. And he pops out of that old group mulling around there, and he gets himself, what, three yards or four yards there. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know. You know, Sheppy goes, what, 220? Yeah. Not 220, 225. And you give him a five-yard hit start? Oh, well, true, yeah, he's going to make some room, I guess. Yeah, I think so. First down and 10, Red Tornadoes on the 50-yard line. 5.42 left in the third quarter. Try Sheppy again. Gain of about a half a yard. The Bruce Brothers backfield in there. Gasman and Sheppy now. And Gasman's in there saying to himself, just let me hit somebody. I don't care who it is. I'll hit somebody. I'll hit anybody. I don't care. Brunda in on the tackle. Worker comes out, Beach goes in. The Bruce brothers still line up in the eye formation. Higgins to Costello, gain of about a half yard. So we'll see a third down and long for the Red Tornadoes from about the 49 yard line. 4.58 left in the third quarter.
Higgins looks at Gonzalo. He got it. First oh, down. Right. Good oh, second effort by Joel Gonzalo just to make a leap out there and reach it down to the 39-yard line for a first down. Nice play by Gonzo that time. Nice play. That was sheer heart there, boy, to get that last yard, boy. He knew where he wanted to go with it. Oh, definitely. He was First of all, he was looking to get away from the defender. And as soon as he saw the second defender coming up to make the tackle, he dove for the first down. Right, nice play. Heads up play. Higgins gives it to Sheptock. Big hole off the right side, <laughs> down to about the 31-yard line. This is this is what I said now as we began the second half that they they seem to have noticeably tired in that in that the Lee Heighton game, and they seem to be showing the effects of it a little bit now too. Dave Baxi and Scott Grady on the right side blocking in the yeah. offensive line and good move by them. I'll tell you what Dave Dave had his had his lineman five yards downfield. He was leading the leading Sheppy down. Higgins with the inside handoff to Costello. That one's stuffed out of, after about a one-yard gain. So Mount Carmel will be faced with a third down and one. Looks like Wargo's going to bring the play into the huddle. We'll see who pops out of there. But usually when Wargo Veach. comes in, Veach comes out. And yeah. when Eric Higgins comes in, Corey Hepler comes out. So they switch to tight yeah. end. and. Yeah. Wargo and Veach at the tailback. Well, now Veach is going to be split at the wing. Wargo is. Hand off to Costello. First down and more oh, oh. down to about the 20-yard line. Nice run by Joe. And again on the Beautiful right run. side behind Grady, Corey Hepler, and Dave Baxter. So that's, that, there's, there's a play now. That, that kind of shows you the offensive confidence here, though. They line up and they run. They need one yard for, for a first down. They not only line up out of a power, they don't have a power backfield, right. but they, they line up and they run away from where the power was with the slot back. They go the opposite direction to the weak side and still pick up, what, eight, nine yards that time. I mean, that's, that's extreme confidence when you're going to do that. Two minutes and 42 seconds left in the third quarter. Higgins looks at Gonzalo in the corner of the end zone, comes back for it, touchdown, <laughs> big red. <laughs> Gonzo. Great reception by Joel Gonzalo. Little tip Great throw there. by Mike Higgins. Oh, that, that was a perfect, that's, that's two people who know each other inside out that can throw that pass and know what the other one's gonna do. Well, this time it looks like Joe Costello probably coming in to attempt the extra point. I, I was wondering why he didn't do that. I thought he was the, the backup guy for that to start You're off right, with. Yeah. I was surprised when, when Hepler, although I'm not saying Hepler doesn't do it well, but I'm just surprised that Snaps he back, in. kicks up, and it's good. With 2.33 remaining in the third quarter, the score, Mount Carmel area 41, Panther Valley 0. Was it uh, last last season, Joel? Who was the holder last season? Was it Joel? Michael. Oh, was it Michael Higgins? Yeah, Higgins held most of the, the time holder. last season. Yeah. And in fact, in most of the scrimmages this year, he was the holder. But I think right now, with uh, with Michael's offensive power, they just have to be careful as to what could happen. Right. You know, with him holding the ball or even on defense. He is an excellent defensive player. Michael Higgins can play defense very well. But right now. You know, when it's your starting quarterback like that, you have to be very careful where you use him. Oh, absolutely. You have luxuries now. I mean, you don't need to put the skilled people on every play anymore. That's that's the, one of the best parts about having so many skilled people now. And everybody else is getting extra playing time, a little oh, bit more experience yeah, week by week. This you is, know. I mean, truly it feeds on, on itself over the year. But when you get those kids in there and start playing a whole quarter sometimes, you know, that's... You don't get that anywhere else but in the game. That's the only place right. you're going to pick that experience up at. Costello kicking off for the Red Tornadoes. Ball's fumbled, picked up by Gehring. Brings it around the right side. Initial hit made by Vic Konatsky. Big number five. Helped out there by number 28, Denny Molosevich. A Panther Valley player down on that play. Big number five. Down a field in a hurry that time, Vic. Vic's a quarterback, and I'll tell you what, 
He's going to be something to watch. Look at the size of that guy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> He's a big boy. <laughs> He's somebody to watch as he comes through the system, too. Fix right now at 6'1", 175 pounds. He's playing as a sophomore, and you'll see him in, uh, in most instances when they bring him in, they'll bring him in at a linebacker position on defense also. Mm -hmm. He has, he has the potential to be a very large young man. He has the, the frame and all for it. Well, we have some new numbers in the game for the Big Red on defense, and we'll start getting them for you as they line up. Let's take this moment at the second half to tell you we are, of course, WKMC-TV. We broadcast in the Mount Carmel Area Broadcasting Center. Our microwave signal is WLX-267. We are an instructional fixed television service. You can find us on the on the service electric channel cable system. We are on channel 13 on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. I'm really getting good at that. I don't even read that anymore. You notice that? I do not have to read that. Hey, you were embarrassing last week. Sorry. I was embarrassed watching when I heard that on the, on the uh, TV. Did you hey, get did over it? it? Yeah, I did. Good. About two seconds after. You're going to have to learn it. I was all right. If you're going to work with me, you're going to have to learn to get over embarrassing a lot faster than you were. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Well, they're, they're working on him a kind of a long time. I hope it's not right. serious. I I'll didn't tell see you what, he was down. He was down. He was holding his knee. The way it looked from here. It was real difficult. I didn't pick up his number either. Now I didn't. He was he was in that jumble there. I didn't see what happened to him or, or any there who hit him or whatever happened. But yeah, they have him up now, and they are holding a knee. You were correct, Frenchie. They looked like he did injure a knee. I worked close with the Medicor uh, over there this summer. So with the UN, uh, yeah, with yeah, the troops. Yeah. yeah so. Well, I guess everybody needs extensive uh, medical training when they go over and into a mission like that. That is true. I guess it's a little bit different for you not being in the sand, though. I know that you, you train so much in the desert, and I go over into the, the craggy hilltops well, of Bosnia and Herzegovina. You haven't seen my backyard, have you? <laughs> I have a lot of sand back here. You know, I just to get used to it. Looking at the defensive lineup for the Big Red in the line, number 77, Bill Anderson at left tackle, 79, Sam Moreau's at right tackle, and number 72, Brian Dixon is at the nose guard. Davis hands one off up the middle. Tackle made in there by number 79, Sam Morose. Also in on the tackle, number 87 for the big red, Ron Davis. And number 89 out there, Bobby Shue. Uh, Bobby Shue's in there also. So Ron no Davis is at a linebacker spot. Vic Karnatsky's in now at linebacker. We have number 25, Nick Gretzky. He'll be at one of the cornerback spots. Safety is number 89, 89 Shue. Bobby. Uh, Danny Malakoski, number 29, is the left cornerback. And at strong safety, number 32, Joe Shikitano. All we missed is the defensive end. Sean Jamin, number 30, is in there. And Steve Ziegler, number 40, is the right defensive end. So on that second down play, number 77, Bill Anderson in on the tackle. And also getting up off the bottom of the pile, number 30, Sean Jamin. Now we got all their numbers. I hope we got well, 11. <laughs> because if we only got 10, we missed one. Well, you didn't tell me I was supposed to count, so I can't help you in that department. 61 into the lineup for the Big Red, Jamie Rowland. 81 went in, Zavarek. Zavarek comes in at the right cornerback position. And also in there, number 45, right? Ryan, Ryan McGee. Ryan McGee, yeah. Pretty good. We, uh, Panther Valley just audible the call. Davis the back to pass. Big rush by number 79, Nine? which That's is Sam uh, Rose. Sam, Sam Bam Rose on the, on the tackle. He was in in a bullet that time. He, he, he was audibling the call. At right. The scrimmage. Now it's, it's third and five. They're down. Well, I think he had a yeah. lot. He was looking like there was a lot open in the middle, and he was going to try for it. Number 31 in the punt for Panther Valley. That's Tony Lee. And deep for the Red Tornadoes, number 27, Dave Evans. And number 29, Dan Malakoski. Kicks going in the direction of 
Nobody. Oh. Nobody. Well, it bounced away from them. Actually, they were both <laughs> waiting for it, and it actually took a big kick to the left. Closest to Evans, and he wisely, and I say wisely. Right, after it took a, that bad kick. There, There's a, you take a young kid, Evans, he's a sophomore, and his natural instinct is to pick the ball. That right. was a heads-up play. The ball bounced crazy away from him, and rather than get in the middle of a, of a fumble or something like that, he shied away from it, and that's exactly what he would have been told to do by the coaching staff. Mount Carmel area takes over, first down and 10 on about the 29-yard line. Nick Gretzky will come in at quarterback and at center, number 74, John Fedock. Rick Harris is at the left guard position and at the right guard position, number 56, Gary Dunn. Gretzky hands off to Dave Evans for about a one-yard gain. Tackle made by McKee in there, also number 31, which is Tony Lee. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, Mount Carmel area 41, Panther Valley 0. Some of the other players that are in there, you'll see number 40, Steve Ziegler at fullback. Number 29, Danny Malakoski will come back in and out with Dave Evans at the tailback spot. Number 76 is also in there on offense, which is Mike Boyer. He'll play the right tackle position. And number... 65, Ricky Harris, is at the right guard position. Sean Jamin's in. He'll be the wide receiver. These are the tough games now, though. We've got to learn everybody's right. number in a hurry to see who's out there because everybody's doing something there. Gretzky comes back into the lineup. Number 68's also in the lineup for the Big Red, which is Brian Lepotsky. Brian Lepotsky. He's, a, he's a big lad, isn't he? Look at him over here. He's 108, 230, 6'3", 235. What year did you say? Uh, Lepotsky is a junior. He's a junior. junior. Red Tornado is faced with a second down and 10. And you see, now, now Lepotsky, he's like a big 235, you know it? <laughs> no, you know what I mean. I mean, take yeah. a look at look at him. He looks bigger than 235 even. He's a he's a big guy. Jamin and Ryan McGee split far left. Hand off to Evans. Takes it around the right side. Yeah, first down. Good for a first down. It's going to be very close. Nice play. We're going to really spot that. Yeah, he gave it to him. Yeah, first down. Nice play that time. Nice play. Evans ran hard that time. A little opening there from the line. This is a switch where Malakoski will come in at. The tailback position. First down and 10, big red. 11.40 left in the ball game. Gretzky pitches back to Malakoski, cuts it upfield. He's to the 49, to the 45, fumbles the ball. And the ball's recovered by Panther Valley. Oh, out of bounds. Out of bounds. I knew it had to be out of bounds. Nice run by Malakoski. Great right? run. He's explosive coming out of there. Nice run. I told. I heard that preseason that uh, he was. Uh, he's he's uh, young, but uh, he's one to watch coming up through the ranks. And you could see that in the special teams because he's put about three or four good hits on just today alone, tonight. Mm -hmm. Balls up the middle to Ziegler for about a three-yard gain. Second down and seven. 11 minutes and five seconds left in the fourth quarter. Number 48, Denny Kashevsky into the Mount Carmel lineup. Dave Evans off the right side, cuts it up the middle. Good for about a seven yard gain and close to a first down. Nice hole, he made a nice cut there. He read the block, he cut the right way and he picked up some big yardage. Nice run that time. I'll tell you what, the line on the right hand side is opening up some holes. Here. Yeah, yeah, they really are. That's that's where the two big gainers came. That, that's the big guy, Lepotsky, bigger than 235 is over there. <laughs> <laughs> They're running right over his way. 
Who's the, who's the guard on his side? Can you? Uh, I'm trying to see. Going on the right side, uh, we have uh, 68. Was it 66? Was 66, it? I think. You're right. But 66, we're in trouble. 56. 56. Gary Dunn. Okay. Ziegler with the ball, close to a first down. Well, we don't have a no 66. No, I'm sorry. I'm a no, I'm a no, no 66. You're over there. I'm over I'm, here. I know. Yeah. I'm a no can even read it right here. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a first down for the Big Red on about the 32-yard line. Boy, and coaches love to see this when it's winding down. This group of guys being out there able to just run the ball like this and, and take time off the clock. Well, they love to see it, but at the same time, they're thinking to themselves, they're going for another score here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nobody likes to run the score up. Obviously. Pitch back to Malakoski out around the right side. Cuts it back up the middle and gains about six yards. And right now, Mount Carmel's runners are running oh, north and yeah. south. I'll they're not what. going east and west. This Evans and Malakoski are two fine-looking runners. They really are. They're, they're something to watch. Now, you, we're looking at... Uh, uh, who's 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 in there as the fullback now? Who are we running as the number fullback? forty? Is the fullback Steve Ziegler? Ziegler now. Ziegler, unfortunately, Ziegler's getting all the dirty work here. <laughs> you know, he's getting the pounding in the middle of the line work, making some extremely good blocks in there. Yeah, he is doing that. That's what's springing these these two faster guys. That's for sure. This one's to Evans, taking it off the right side. First uh. down, Red Tornadoes. Nice hole again. They're really whacking that side over there. And again, we just get done saying, look at Ziegler. Went through that hole like a freight train going through there in front of him. Number 81 into the Red Tornado lineup, Mike Zavarik. Eight minutes and 40 seconds left in the ball game. 41 to nothing. Mount Carmelary in the lead. Well, you know your line's doing a job when they're five yards downfield in front of the uh, in front of the, the runner. Yeah. In front of the halfback, <laughs> exactly. and that's what they're doing. That's like exactly the line right. surge is, is, is downfield. Yeah, you know? you're exactly right. That's that's exactly what you're looking at there. They're really moving off the ball. Gretzky gives it up the middle to Ziegler. Stuffed in the center there for about a uh, one yard loss. 65 running into the game, Rick Harris. He came in for number 64, Marlon Bressy, and we miss Marlon going into the game. Number 48, 60. Denny Kashevsky comes in at fullback. Was he the guard I was looking for? Well, no, he or came. No. He, he switched, side? right? Okay. They switched, okay. so he had just gone in. All right. But he did make a couple extremely good blocks on those last two series. Handoff to Evans off the right side, gain of about five yards. Malcolm will be faced with a second down third. and third. or third yeah. down and about six. We're in four down territory here, so I got two downs to make it. And again, just grinding precious time off now, and, and there's just nothing the Panthers can do now. They've got to be pretty much resigned to try to put this one behind them, getting the right. buzz and, Go home. and look forward to next week. Who do they play next week, Bob? Do you know that? I don't know that. I don't know. See, you, you always know those little things. I know, like and that, that one, I, I, well, I, I missed it today. This one's a Malakowski. Nice cut. Close to the first down, but we'll be about one or two yards short. He's a fine looking runner, really is. A lot of good instincts there, you know. That's right. There's a lot of things you can't teach him to do. He just knows them. Two and a half yards, maybe three yards tops, I guess. I'd say a long two. We'll call it fourth down and a long two. Long two. Six twenty seven left in the ball game. Gretzky to Evans off the right side. Big hole. Five touchdown. forward. Touchdown. touchdown, Red Tornadoes. Good nice blocking. Run. Nice run and a great, great offensive drive by the young Red Tornadoes. I'll tell you what, that group there, they takes no backseat to anybody. <laughs> My goodness. They, they took no prisoners yeah. on this drive. My goodness. Here's that situation again where nobody knows who's yeah, going to do the extra who does point. The extra point <laughs> <laughs> Coach Connolly's out there because he's got, I know he has too many guys there. I believe he still has one too many guys out there. I'm not sure. One wandered off. 
he's going to do the head count again now. There's 11. Uh, no, we got Joey one going in going. now, so we're going to be in trouble if somebody. There's two going back in. Well, that you know what that is? That's the kicker and the holder. Yeah. Now, you see what happens now. Connolly just counted everybody's head down. He said two more guys are thinking of us all now. Here comes one out, two out. He's still counting. <laughs> now, pretty soon he's going to start telling them who's playing in what position. Yeah, this is the hardest part of the game now to line up <laughs> for an extra point now with, with this much time left. <laughs> Look at this coach Conley sprinting off the field. Here well, number 26, P. Cheddar will hold for number 41, Joe Costello. Snaps back. It's up. Ooh. And big block by number 79, which is, se no, 79 from the Panthers, Dan Durr. That was kind of kind of doomed from the start when the, when the snap went on the other side of Pete's body there. He had to reach all the way around and grab it before he could get it set up. So. But you don't expect That's a lot a of precision on, on that group because every one of them probably played a different position out there. That is true. To. Joe's holding his hand as he comes off. It looks like he took a shot in the, well, in, in you know, the uh, ring when, finger. When he kicked the ball, the kid took his feet out from underneath him and he went overhead first. And I guess when he tried to break his fall. That brings a new kicker onto the field, a new long kicker gang. Vic. Uh, Vic. Kurnatsky's out there, gonna knock this one down. The Vic Man. He certainly has enough leg. <laughs> gonna give him that. He's a rangy one. 6-12 <laughs> left in the ball game. 47 to nothing. Mount Carmel area in the lead. Good kick by Vic. Gets it down to about the 10 yard line. Taken by Gehring in the ball game right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Who is that? Get off. Number 28. 28, 28 made the final hit in there for the Red Tornadoes. Denny Molosevich. And right. he was slowed up by number 87, Ron, Ron Davis. Davis. All right, Denny. Good stick, Molosevich. Nice hit. I love a good hit on the kickoff. I can afford that because I'm up here. <laughs> Well, right now, with five minutes and 47 seconds on the clock, the Panthers will be happy to get out of here right now. now I see. I'm looking at the sign here. I just noticed, and it's been up all, all things up there. The, the Panther Valley Panthers, the signers, was here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> Pretty much summed up their evening. Davis in at quarterback. Looks like he called that one off again, Warren. Going to try the option play. Ball's going back and is covered on about the 16-yard line by Davis, and it's lucky that wasn't another big red touchdown. If he is well, audibly in the call, <laughs> that's what's occurring. There's a good chance he's going to go out and get punched by the head coach because I don't think they're going to want a lot of audibleizing going on here. Well, Ziggler, I'll tell you what, Ziggler was right in on the play, number 40. Yeah, I think we're pretty much trying to grind this baby out and get back in a bus is what we're yeah, trying to head that's for. That's what they should do. We're, our goal, their goal here is the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, but that happens. Your goal becomes the bus after a certain amount of points are scored. Fourth quarter, four minutes and 47 seconds left in the ball game. We're going to have motion on this play. Number 76, the big tackle from Panther Valley moved on that one, which was uh, John... Orsolek. Orsolek, yeah. You know what? They've been around. There have been Orsolek yeah, there. I was going to say, that's a name I remember, right. He's too. A, this one's a junior. 5'11", 230. Yeah. Malaska's a name you remember. First right. 76. Too. It's the same, you know, like here, the same name come down. through over a period of years. Second down and 29 for the Panthers. Davis is going to try to throw. Big rush by Ziegler. Now Davis rolls to his right, looks downfield, and the only one there was number 89 for the Red Tornadoes, Robert Chu. He's a heck of an arm, though. I'll give him that. He can really wing it. He had no, there was no receiver there at all, but that was a nice heave. 
Davis is a sophomore, 5'11", 180 pounds. He would be the quarterback of the future, I'm sure, with Kuzma being a senior. So we'll, we'll be seeing uh, Mike Davis for the next couple of years at least. He has, a, he has a good arm, and I think Kuzma had a good arm too, uh, Wayne, but I don't think the passing game was very sophisticated, to tell you the truth. Oh, I don't think so It didn't either. show much that way. It's either that or we defensive very well, yeah, I mean, one, well you know, one or the other. You're up against a really good defense, but it, it just doesn't look like it like it's ready to mesh yet. It seems like it, maybe a couple of games maybe it might, but it, it didn't look. He wasn't even on the, on the target no. you know, much. Davis, straight drop back, throwing from about his oh, own end oh. zone. <laughs> And out of the reaches again, Shu over there was about the only person yeah. that could have caught that ball. That's so cool. now Panther Valley faced with a fourth down and 29. Still three minutes and 52 seconds left on the clock. Mount Carmel will be able to run a couple plays here. He is. He's even at 40-some yards when he does that, you know, each time. Kind of effortlessly, so he's got a nice arm. Back for the Red Tornadoes on this kickoff, number 29, Dan Malakoski, and number 81, Mike Zavarik snaps back, Ooh. kicks away. Zavarik called for a fair catch on about the 36-yard line. Penalty flag flew too. I don't know what that is. How would that be back there? I mean, well, the only thing it could have been is maybe a it or, right. he, or he attempted to run with it, one or the other. After he called a fair right. catch. There's not well, too many calls can be made out. there. Yeah, we'll soon find out. We might even let us let everybody hear what he says this time, too, huh? What do you think? Yeah, two sounds out of, good. Two out of 15 times tonight, we let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's discussing it with Panther Valley right now, so that would lead to believe that the call is going to be called against Mount Carmel area. I mean, we might want to be stepping back a little bit. Or, or the there it day. is. He's still Got an invalid fair catch signal on the red. It's refused. We got first down. An illegal fair catch. That's what it was, Kyle. You had that call. You're right. It can only be one or two. I mean, the other one is you don't give enough room to catch it. That's the only other play right. that can occur out there. What's the yardage on that baby now? Not yet. Apparently, what they had called an illegal they fair catch, it. they declined it, or, or else they would have punned it over. Apparently, oh, the, oh, right? You decline, like, oh, you right. decline to play. I or, see. Okay, you're right. Heard right. a penalty. Yeah, they didn't want to do that. Okay, right. I well, understand. Mount Carmel area will take over with first down and ten with the ball on the 37-yard line. Oh, I see what we're doing now, gang. I'm up to speed on this one. Yeah, okay. Good, good thing I'm. Kranatsky and a quarterback now hands the ball off to Kashevsky. Good for about a five-yard gain. You know, it gets tiring being your interpreter. Yeah, it took a little time to get my engine revved up to that one. I'll tell you. I'm, why I keep you guys around. Second down and 10. Three minutes left in the ball game. It's getting a little chilly now, French. You, know, you can put one of those three or four sweaters you brought with you on, though. Yeah, and you laughed at me. <laughs> A lot of nerve. <laughs> Kornatsky hands off to Koshevsky up the middle. Gain of about two yards. Third down and four. Whoa, number 73 from the Panthers just tried to take on number 79, Sam Moroz, and Moroz just left him go, and this is going to be a call against Panther Valley. 73 got thrown throw out of the game. <laughs> Took the express lane out of the game, that one, boys. <laughs> He heads for the bus early. He goes to the bus <laughs> early. He took the express lane out. <laughs> Got a dead bull foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct. 73 on the right. Boy, and nothing's yards. going right down. for the Panthers. Well, you got to be a little PO'd if you're, if you're that because you don't, if you're 73, you probably didn't get into the game much to start off with. You get thrown out right as you get in. So. <laughs> Talking about shooting yourself in the foot, you know. <laughs> Kranatsky sets the young tornadoes. This one's going to Malakoski off the right side. Cuts it back to the middle. Boy. Still has the ball going with it for about a seven or eight yard gain. 
Nice run by Danny Malakoski. Two minutes left in the ball game, 47 to nothing. Big Red in the lead and driving again with the ball on the 11-yard line. Kanatsky back to pass, and he downs the ball. Oh, cheap shot. Come on. Grow up. So right now it looks like Mount Carmel is going to uh, run the clock out, yeah. which was a wise decision. We're not going to add any more insult to injury right. in this one. That's that's the right thing to do. But, uh, it's a hard thing for, for Vic to do because he's in there to compete. He wants you're right. to play and, and wants to show what he can do. But uh, well, well, after a shot like that, they might change their mind and, yeah. and run the ball. You yeah. know, I, you know, we're, we're down in the ball here. I, at the supper club last night, uh, Mr. Gergen had informed us that uh, Mount Carmel tornadoes were going to be in the USA today. Uh, Inaccurately, though. Inaccurately. Right, that is true. Inaccurately. Uh, although, as he said, the, the system uh, USA Today had contacted someone from West Virginia, I think, mm -hmm. someone that keeps stats right. there, and they keep it a little bit different than uh, what we keep it. And uh, yes, it is a little bit uh, inaccurate. Let's put it that You're way. You're counting high school wins against high school or prep teams. Right. Mount Carmel or, area is sixth in the nation. Right. First in Pennsylvania, sixth in the nation. But you're gonna, if you saw the USA Today, you were probably eighth, I believe, because of that discrepancy in well, how, how they counted the and wins. And what he said, the, the number of wins that other teams were using, or this person uh, down in uh, West Virginia was using, was uh, a hometown team. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, a club team, a, a fire club team. company Dooleyville, team, something. Dooleyville, you in, know, in the early a, 1900s, a, there right. was a lot of that happening. That is and, true. Uh, or semi-pro, right? Yeah. I think that's what they but said. Mount Carmel area's wins, the 616 wins you're looking at there, are all against high school and or prep teams. And the prep teams, uh, you're talking about uh, a college freshman team. Uh, Bucknell. Bucknell uh, they did play those in, in the early years, yeah, too. Bucknell, so. Bloomsburg, uh, Albright freshman, I but think. Phil they was kind of peeved, you know, and I, I don't blame <laughs> well. him. And, and, you know, Phil, Phil called USA Today, spoke to the guy personally, you know, told him he thought he was wrong, and uh, that's, that's what we have Phil for. That's what you need. That is true. <laughs> that should be the last play of the ball game. 11 seconds still left on the clock, and oh, this is a change of possession, so there is yeah. a timeout on yeah. a change of possession. It was it was first down. Now the ball the clock starts, and uh, Panther Valley at this point looks like they're just going to run it out and not run well, another they play. They only have about nine guys on the field. Two seconds, off, one right? second, and another big win for the Big Red, 47 to nothing as they make their trip through the valley. Excellent. Another another uh, great football game. Well, believe it or not, it's a, it's a 47 to nothing score, but a little stiffer competition than, than Tawaka provided, which is hard to believe, but it was. And uh, Panther Valley, Panther Valley was, I think, a tougher physical team. They were they were a better organized team than Tawaka yeah. was, I think. Anyway. There was no 12 men in the field and no, you know, goofy things happening like happened at Tamaqua. And again, they were just completely manhandled. Well, the other thing is they're a, a very uh, much bigger team, and I think a little bit more physical. They could they could actually move the ball up and down the field that Tamaqua could not do uh, last week. And they did have the threat of the quarterback, although did not show, uh, you right. know, his passing ability. And if you take a look back at some of the plays that were called, they were questionable. There were no down and outs. There were no no quick, you know, pick up 10 yards like we run. You know, let the quarterback work a little bit. Everything was deep. Everything was deep, plus those two little uh, throws up in the air that, that we had caught, but uh, that we intercepted. But I think they were a much better team than Tamako was. One thing you saw tonight, too, is the explosiveness of our offense. There is no doubt Mount Carmel area has one of the best offenses going right now, and we're going to have to see who can stop them. Well... 
Uh, you're going to slow them down. You're not going to stop them, let's face it. I don't know what defense in, in the next eight games is going to do that. You're scouting a team. You're on film. And if you're Marion Catholic next week, you're looking at this group and you're saying to yourself, well, you got Higgins at quarterback and, and the Gonzo at the end. You got uh, Sheptock in the middle. You got Beach. You got Wargo. You got uh, a tight end. Costello. That can catch the ball. You got Costello. You know, and this is only an offense here. You got, a, you got an offensive line that is devastating. Right now, it's devastating the other side of the line of scrimmage in both games. So what, what do you do? What defense do you run? What do you tell your kids to do? You want to key Higgins? You want to key Gonzalo? You want to key it? Who are you going to key? You can't. You're going you're gonna to try to play the toughest defense you can and hope that uh, that you hold together for, for a whole game. But sooner or later, somebody like Veach, after, if you get hammered by Costello and by uh, Sheptog, there goes Veach passing in a, in a bolt of lightning. So it's very, very difficult. To try to, to try to defend them. The great, the great thing about it is if you look last week and this week, uh, our defense is on the field just a limited amount of time, which in the past few years, that has not happened. Our defense was wore out by the end of the game. Our offense has now taken over. Our defense come in, comes in, they're fresh, and we have the big boys to, to, to run the defense that we want to run. And right now it's an awesome defense. That's right. Two games, no scores. Now, this is this is a team now that the next team and the team after that is gonna gonna have to come out and play their best game and really go at them if they expect to win. Because you let up for a minute and you're gonna get hurt. You really are. This is a well balanced football team. Now again, we say this and they are well balanced and they have all the talent in the world, but they're not gonna be phoning the score into somebody here. You're gonna play Marion Catholic, you're gonna play a quality program. That's right. And if these kids might be too young. They might have forgotten that pacing that Marion Catholic gave us up there a couple of years ago and some of the hard-fought battles that have gone the last four years. Don't think because they lost last week, and we're not sure what they're doing this week, but, be, but they're going to be a pushover. No. Well, you definitely know when you go to Marion Catholic on a Saturday afternoon, Marion Catholic is ready for Mount Carmel play football. That's right. They bring all the elementary students from the Tamaqua and, and the area up there. They have special areas for them to sit. They have special cheering sections. And it, it is it's a strange place to go play high school football. Yeah, and we're going to see that next weekend. Marion Catholic against Mount Carmel area. But again, Mount Carmel area ranked very high in the state and uh, very high now with, with uh, 16. Well, that's it from here. Again, the final score, Mount Carmel area 47, Panther Valley 0. I'm Bob Else. I'm Warren Altamar. Wayne Brokenshire. Good night.